Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Overwatch League. I'm Mitch Letzley here with Matthew Morello, and hopefully you've had a chance to catch your breath because we have a bit of a story here that we've been following for a while. The Washington Justice, Matt, uh, lost a couple of their players who've moved on to other uh, pursuits and have, have theoretically picked up some really solid additions. Yeah. Stitch and Janu from the previous Vancouver Titans roster joined this team. But so far in the Summer Showdown, they are 0-3 at negative 6. They've been 3 0 twice yeah. so far in this tournament. And they haven't shown a lot of improvement. I think that's where I really worry. I don't really worry about the 3 0s. I worry about uh, how the team has looked week to week uh, consistently throughout the year through different hero pools and whatnot. We haven't seen yep. uh, much improvement. Uh, I believe, though, the Justice organization said, hey, look, like we're really focused on uh, you know, finishing out the season as strong as possible, then looking towards 2021. Uh, so y you expect this roster to uh, have additions over time. No doubt about it. I mean, here is your starting roster, of course. Stitch, Tuba, Janu, Aim God, Ark, and Raw, who, of course, you may remember, is playing against our previous team. And that's what, uh, you know, we want to sort of talk about a little bit uh, in the lead up to this game. It's part of our connections presented by Xfinity. Because Raw, of course, you know, we, we talk to players all the time. We ask them the same question, Matt. We say, like, what is it like playing your old team? And we get, like, a really varied um, uh, sort of slew yeah. of different answers, right? Some, some guys, you know, like, really relish that opportunity to go against old teammates some try and play it off but i always think and i mean you might be able to answer this man having had some professional play in your own career did it mean something to you going against like past teammates sometimes uh it all kind of depends on how things end in terms of like the team and how the dynamics work uh for roar specifically with this matchup but, like it is against his former team per se but how many of those players are left uh, it's really just like Shaz, Big Goose, and then I know Deepay as the coach, right? Uh, everybody else is uh, new for the Gladiators as they go through a whole season of just uh, uh, off season of just rebuilding the team. Uh, I do think, though, for Boar specifically, like he's never beat the Gladiators, so to try and get a win against them would be a, uh, a nice start. Yeah, maybe he's looking at it more uh, in a macro sense of his team versus theirs instead yes. of him versus the Gladiators. Uh, I mean, you know, they, these two teams were head, to, were head to head back in week 16, which is, is right. quite a while while back now, and it was a pretty comfortable win for the Gladiators there. Roar and OG played a bunch of Winston. We just saw some Winston in the previous match, right? So, uh, especially on Gibraltar, that might be an option to the, uh, in this series, even if Gibraltar's not in the pool, but it definitely looked like OG was sort of miles ahead of him, Matt, in all the stats yes. that matter anyway. I, and I think, though, when, when you see teams struggle, it's always like the the main tank who's going to look the worst, right? Because they're the one who's initiating a lot of the times. They're the one who's getting pressured down by the other team. When the team's out of sync, you're going to see some odd, not, not as ideal play from the main tank position. So I think you can really uh, just look at it as uh, the roar, not really individually uh, struggling that much, but just a, a, uh, a sum of what the team has done as a whole. I mean, play it up or play it down. Uh, Roar is going up against his previous team, so we did take a moment to hear from him a little bit about what it meant to him, if anything, going up against the Gladiators today. 네 소속 팀이었다고 막 특별한 것은 없고 그래도 우리 팀한테는 그래도 지금 상황이 많이 좋지는 않은데 그 글래디를 이긴다면은 우리한테도 좋고 나한테도 더 기쁠 것 같은데. 이기려면 결국에는 기본기가 잘 받쳐줘야 되는데 아직 팀업을 꽤 마친지는 꽤 됐는데 좀 여러 가지 이슈가 많았어서 결국엔 기본기를 잘하고 서로 말 잘하면은 그래도 괜찮게 할것 같은데. Well, I, I mean, I'm not really surprised I by the answer we got there. Now. Like, if he's like going into this matchup, he shouldn't be focused on beating the Gladiators. Their team hasn't beaten anybody. It should be no matter who the opponent should be. It should be about just getting the win in general. Like, uh, I think needing the extra motivation to, to do it against a former team. It's like you, you should be motivated to just get a win in general, right? Yeah, fair enough. And I also finished that quote with, you know, we're talking about the, the basics, the fundamentals we really need, really need to get right. Yeah. Let's uh, let, let's shift the conversation. Let's talk a little bit about the Gladiators then, because obviously they're a team with a new addition. Um, their, their roster also saw LH Cloudy actually come back into the mix a little bit more. So we've seen yes. some more of him lately instead of OG, which is interesting. Uh, and Ke and Kevster, of course, uh, has entered the lineup yep. recently. And uh, what's your take on uh, uh, those changes, man? So Kevster allows them to play uh, double hit scan type of scenarios or like Tracer Ash uh, scenarios, which really is what the Gladiators were struggling with early on. When we usually see LH Cloudy come in, that's when they want to run more Reinhardt-based rush type compositions. 
Uh, so we'll see if that's what they come out with against the Washington Justice early to kick things off. Now, bear in mind as well, there are no hero pulls in effect right now. That means someone like Space gets to play some of his you know, strongest picks. If you look at his Sigma stats, they look very good early on when Sigma sort of first started to come into the fold. Lately, not ne they're not nearly as good as his Diva stats have con consistently remained. So it's a great chance here and you can, uh, for, for Space to go back to that pick and actually continually uh, continuing to make that impact, especially with you know, some dive composition <laughs> potential. I mean, look, uh, what, number one in damage, two yeah. in a limbs, three in final blows. Uh, we know Space is a phenomenal off-tank player. I feel like uh, with a lot of, it, it's interesting, with a lot of the questions about the Gladiators this season, uh, you focus a lot on those. A lot of the times you don't end up focusing on a lot of the positives. So you're, you're worried about OG's consistency. You're worried about the damage dealers. Uh, that we really haven't highlighted uh, how great space is as a player uh, phenomenal off tank yeah and uh, i mean the gladiators here yes there's a change at main tank to start with and you highlighted maybe we should expect to see a little bit more reinhardt also rush down compositions these are map set of course lee jung tower is going to be our first map of this series followed by a volskaya industries then we get rialto which would be an interesting one depending on which sort of main tank the gladiator start with if kevster and bird ring still operate playing sort of uh, that tracer ash kind of composition continually uh you know getting more data on kevster as a player as it comes in so it's exciting time this mid-season sort of area to to get a read on some of these young guns so, so with lee Zhang tower as the first map in this series i fully expect them to commit the gladiators to a lot of these rush style compositions uh with the reinhardt in play Use the Reinhardt like a battering ram. Just go right into the front line of the Justice. Uh, there's a lot of different spots on Li Zhang Tower you can make that work. And uh, we'll see the composition in just a moment. The Gladiators are, are going to start with. I mean, with, with Cloudy here, do you feel like it's like a, a, a risk, it's still a risk of Sigma, maybe, for the time being? Especially because we're not looking at Control Center. It's Night Market first up here in the series. Uh, well, with, with Cloudy in the mix, you're going to see the Reinhardt. Uh, so th they have not played Cloudy in any other type of compositions when uh, other than like Reinhardt type of looks, right? So uh, at least at the start here, it looks like they'll be running the Reinhardt uh, with the Sigma. Uh, and then they're going to play a little bit slower, it looks like, with Bird Ring on the McCree. That is the plan right now. And uh, maybe just a TP out here by Kevster. Two, See what he rolls with in a moment. Johnny looks like he's going to be on the Sigma. and Okay, so it is going to be Ryan Sigma here, which we did see a little bit in the previous series. The McCree here for Bird Ring. Stitch is going to be on the Ash, though, so that's the point of difference. Bird Ring definitely needs to be careful of Hold Accretion. Well, McCree, a little bit fragile to that. Yeah, with the way that the Gladiators want to play with the Reinhardt, you don't need the long-range damage of the Ash. You're going to play much close quarters with the Reinhardt, with the Brigitte, so that's why the McCree is able to work oh here. My. Look at this This flag. is audacious. I mean, only Bird Ring goes for this, right at the start uh, of the map side, as well. Sideshow Gaming goes for these as well, which should tell you a little bit something about the flank potentially here. A Bird Ring didn't die. That's the biggest difference between them there. The Gladiators, this actually works out for them. Looks like a threat of Bird Ring going on a solo flank. Takes enough attention away from the Justice, who just looked overwhelmed. Unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> that is... That, that, is shouldn't be, uh, uh, that shouldn't be something you're able to pull off. But... Uh, Bird Ring did have Big Goose on the Brigitte coming with him around the corner as well. So they're able to kind of collapse onto the members of the Justice. Uh, pick him off. Nice opening into the Gladiators here. Some swagger to their step early on. The Justice who still seem to be fighting uh, no, their feet. I don't blame do them. At this time with an Ant Matrix? This is so wrong. There's nothing right about this at all. I'm, the, the Geneva Convention in Overwatch is literally getting broken as we speak. Hey, God! Oh, no! Bird Ring breaks him down. Immortality Field had to be used. Now, does this backfire for the Gladiators? No, probably Jazz not. is able to find Janu, and that might have saved oh, things there. Focusing Beam onto Big Goose here, and Raw's playing Orisa, so no one's moving him right now. Yeah, did, Cl can't did, Cloudy this, die, this did Cloudy die really early in that fight, or did he back out? Because uh, Cloudy, if he would have been alive, they would have been able to maybe try and make something happen with like a shatter from the other side. But the flank actually does end up burning them in the end. Well, that didn't work out the way the Gladiators would have liked. It is a big commitment uh, just to set up the McCree. Murdering. Again, looking for options. Space goes down so early in the fight, though, and Cloudy, he's got hit with everything but the kitchen sink. Accretion came in, and Tuba finished that kill off, and the Justice now... At least demonstrating that they're not a team to be trifled with. Yeah, now that the Justice have some space to work with, it, it makes the Ash a little bit more effective. Same with the Echo, and it really hurts that Reinhardt rush style composition, especially when they're not going to be running the Lucio for the Gladiator. So 
Uh, now that the Justice have control of this space, their composition has a bit of an advantage. Rubidic Flux now, Kevster keeping a respectful distance. Does have Duplicate online, but Birdwing's already gone down and had to be an Immortality field to keep the rest of the Gladiators fighting fit. Gonna play it, play it down here. Kevster, yeah. Okay, saves the Duplicate. Tuba gonna copy it for Tixt here. Not really uh, stored at any extra healing, and the Gladiators trying to group up a little bit here. Cloudy, well, doing oh, the opposite of that, health actually. Pack. I, I, I don't know if that was the plan. Maybe that was just an improvisation midway through. Either way, it keeps them alive somehow, and this incredibly aggressive confidence style from the Gladiators now. Will it hold water when they come to take the point once more? Yeah, and Birdring makes a switch off the McCree to Ash here. Shatter from Cloudy comes right around the corner. You just get Aim God with it, but totally worth to take out that Batiste and flip the point. That's absurd. It works for the Gladiators now. They're behind in percentage as of uh, that capture. But now ample time to get themselves close to winning the round here. Gravitic Flux available for space. Amplification Matrix is going to be there for Shaz. So let's see if the Gladiators can force the drone out of Aim God by any other means. Here's the window from Shaz. Aim God pushes up. Doesn't use Immortality Field, crucially. Wants to push forward now with the window of his own. That's going to force the field from the Gladiators. Aim God backs up here. Gravitic Flux is thrown into the mix, but there's so much healing available to the Justice. Not enough, though, to keep the alive, <laughs> apparently. The Shatter is big. Cloudy with a chance of getting sat the heck down. Nice Shatter. And Tuba finished off at the end of the fight. Uh, it's 87% and counting. The Gladiators are ranging far from the points. The Justice just takes so much damage. They use their own window, the Justice, but they're not able to come around the corner. Everybody takes so much damage, and then the Dynamite comes in from Bird Ring, gets them all weak with the Gravitic Flux from space. John will get on the point and touch, but he falls quick. It looks like the Gladiator is going to be able to pull this one out. Kevster down to the Sticky Bombs at the least. Uh, immortality Field deployed for him, but he wasn't able to benefit. And Tuba taking a pit stop, getting a health pack. No chance to contest there. And so the Gladiator is playing uh, one of the more uh, aggressive styles of Overwatch we've seen over the last uh, few weeks. It pays off. The Justice kind of crumble when they get tested like that. It's They get so close to Justice, but it feels like in those type of situations where they, they need to really be in sync to get a fight going when they don't have a distinct advantage, that's when they really get punished. Is See what the Gladiators do uh, again. I mean, they're going to stay, uh, at least in my opinion, when you play Cloudy, you're going to stay on this kind of composition the whole game. You're going to commit to this rush style comp. Bird Ring doesn't come out on the Ash again. He'll be on the uh, Free. Uh, they're they're going to run something that's pretty similar to what they ran at the beginning of the, the last point. No adjustments here from the Washington Adjustment. Kevster on the Tracer now. Curry Tracer Reinhardt? Man. What a throwback. Birdring now will just use uh, sidelines on either side of uh, that divider for the time being. Gives him a, a plenty of early warning as well in case Tuba tries to descend on him and, and burst him down with sticky bombs and beam. Space wants to brawl a little bit. Look at this. Cloudy pushes up as well. Nice cohesion for the Gladiators now. Confidence in coming in forward. Stitch almost gets knocked off the edge there. Yeah, he's thanking his lucky stars for that one. But now he's getting harassed by Kevster. No time to be thankful. Space. Well. Reaps what he sows, and apparently he sowed a bunch of nerd seeds. The harvest is good this year, Matt. And look how much ultimate percentage Cloudy gets at the start, right? They use, like, kinetic grass, farmer packs, immortality to get him in position where he can swing. And I really like the inclusion of a tracer in this composition for the Gladiators. This allows them to just constantly go at this backline, constantly pester them, and put the pressure on the Stitch, because there's been a lot of question marks about how Stitch can handle in terms of... You know, being the main hitscan player for a team, uh, you may as well try and challenge him. Tuba, living dangerously! Ooh. That is going to be the Amplification Matrix Fire Strike combo. And the Pyrotechnics don't stop there. Nice Pulse Bomb from Kevster. And now, uh, I want to see that I... from Cloudy's POV. Oh. I mean, you probably know, you can probably imagine what it looks like, right? Uh, here we go. This is this is the ultimate yeah. sign of disrespect. The yeah. flying, the, 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 360 jump shatter from the it's, high ground. They're gonna, like they're standing, gonna come over here as well. I can't believe this is Sparta. I cannot. They okay, he's spotted. There. Oh, Cloudy! You got this, Cloudy. I mean, this is they continually disrespecting. They, they get a kill with a dead caught. eye. Yeah, couldn't dump altitude quickly enough, Matt. Cloudy just gets to walk away. Uh -huh. The absolute state of this match. I don't know how he gets away Where with that. 
fight wherever he pleases, Matt. It doesn't actually matter where he goes. Immortality field, <laughs> shout out for two. We take those. Gladiator's slight over extension I was gonna say, there. He's gonna die eventually. I mean, they use, they literally just chucked everything out at the justice. Why is this? Why is this? A, okay. To, to well. win that, they had to use Ant Matrix Bob Rally. Against a Reinhardt who is like 100 HP with no shield, uh, that, that's kind of rough. And what does Birdring care about using a Deadeye? He gets him back fairly quickly, it's a throwaway, yeah. he gets a kill. Finding Shaz there was nice from Stitch, good little shot. Again, he's a uh, similar positioning to uh, what Birdring plays there, albeit a little closer. <laughs> I mean, Birdring wants a fight, bro. <laughs> he is ready to square up with this dude. Dynamite in there, and the Gladiators, are they going to split themselves up? Yeah. So this is where the Gladiator's composition, this is where they suffer the downside of it. When no Lucio's speed boost is a large gap to close and they have to make sure when they close the gap, they still have all of their cooldowns to make a play. All right, Gravitic Flux. But, oh, uh, big damage, yeah. good field there, but where's the burst healing? Chas trying to get it in there and he does a beautiful job of it. Cloudy fighting Tuba with a fire strike there again. That Ant Matrix sets up another guaranteed kill. There is no escape from that kind of thing. Birdering. Does notice the immortality field and actually cleverly switches target to someone who's standing outside of him. Damn, he's got really good peripheral awareness. Space pushes up a little bit more now and the Justice get corralled onto the bridge. That's not a good place for them. No, and Roar now on the ball. Looks like Stitch is off the side of the map. Tuba will become Sigma. There's a dead eye from Bird Ring. He gets a kill on Aurora. The dead eye kill on the aim guard. Oh, it's no, gladiators. This is... Oh, it's inhumane. It doesn't feel right for the Justice, but they are getting taken to school. And the Gladiators, with consummate ease, conquer them here in his first map of the series. Li Zhang Tower dominated by uh, some audacious movements, especially from the McCree setup, the Reinhardt pushing forward. That is some serious uh, aggression. Shields it, down for the Gladiators. They have their claws out. Though. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if the Gladiators are going to play this composition and the Justice are going to play into it exactly like they just did, this is going to be a series where the Gladiators, you're going to see them just kind of run over because... But when the Reinhardt composition like this, and it's like a little bit of a Reinhardt death ball where he's like a big damage dealer, gets in a position, you keep the Reinhardt alive as well as Gladiator's doing. Uh, if you don't have a strong answer to it, you're gonna see results like this. So uh, the Justice have to uh, have to make a change here. Yeah, and they have to try and dig their feet in a little bit more, maybe a different composition, because right now they're getting sliced, they're getting diced, and they're getting turned into chum. They spent that map feeding the uh, holographic fishes. Let's see if they can bring it back, though. Map 2 is just around the corner. Let's see if the Justice can claw one back. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Zipchair Gaming, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League.
Welcome back, everybody. Here after map number one, there wasn't much left of the justice to clean up there, but the Gladiators did a clean job of it anyway. Map number two now, just around a corner, Matthew, but there are some big subs uh, for both yes. sides, actually. Uh, so we do have a, a... Well, we have a sub just for the uh, Gladiators. Uh, it'll oh, be just right, the yes, Gladiators. Two uh, for the Gladiators. Yes, uh, there's not many players on the justice to really be able to make subs. In fact, uh, there's only one more left over. There's yes. only one spare. Uh, <laughs> uh, for the Gladiators, you'll have Mirror come in for Bird Ring. Uh, so you'll get that for Volskaya, and then you will also have OG come in. So uh, the tank switch tells you that they want to play some type of Arisa type of compositions, uh, maybe some Winston as well, uh, but really uh, not going as much to the Reinhardt rush as we just saw with LH Claudian. Uh, and then having Kevstar and Mirror in, uh, this would tell you probably we're going to get something built around May. Then Kevstar can stay in and play some of the hitscan stuff, or maybe we get some Echo play. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, this is a new look, though, from the Gladiators, as really it's been Bird Ring who's been in most of the time in terms of damage shield. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you would never really thought a team would have a reason to sub Bird Ring uh, at this stage. The Gladiators, though, but I mean, with the kind of meta we're seeing now, and even with, like, you know, Genji creeping back in, a lot of Ash Tracer play, uh, I mean, Doom is still being relevant, but mostly May is what uh, is in Mirror's hero pool. I think that's going to be sort of drawn upon here. I mean... The tone has been set in this series by the Gladiators, man. Map number yes. one, they played the game in a, a very irreverent manner, right? There was not a lot of respect. They were going uh, for wild flanks, making those plays. And honestly, the Gladiators got styled on. And what the Gladiators were seeing is the team, I think, in the Justice, who obviously adding two new players at key roles is very difficult to kind of get that communication teamwork on the fly. Let's get aggressive, challenge them. We've been the same team the whole year. Let's, let's put pressure on them. Let's force them to make decisions on the fly. And that's where you see teams not be on the same page. Players get split, not great uh, ultimate usage. So I, I think the Gladiators are coming today, as at least so far, with a very good game plan. Let's see now for the Justice. Obviously, a ton of options. Uh, Tuba looks pretty solid uh, when it comes to the Echo. He looked all right uh, when we saw him on Lijiang Tower. So I see him go back towards that. And Stitch is a known quantity in terms of his caliber as a player, Matt. Uh, you know, he works with Janu pretty well. This team, realistically, there's nothing that we can see that's standing in their way. Good group of six players. Uh, you know, coaching staff is there. Less so than there was, but it's still there. Yeah. So uh, Let's see what they can provide on defense here. Yes, yeah, so they come out with uh, something pretty standard uh, on defense. Uh, we'll take a look at what really, I think the answer is, what did the Gladiators decide to do on offense? Did they want to play something that includes like a Genji? Uh, what? What is the go-to here for the Gladiators? Is I think the meta has changed way more than I expected it to uh, now that we've unlocked everything. thought we would have a little bit of variation, but not see as much. But there's also a patch that comes in at the same time, right? So, Well, that, that's right, of course. And it was, a, it was a tweak to Echo that makes it a bit more dangerous to, to get like a full beam on an enemy target. Because yeah. I think it's been shortened from 20 to 16 in-game meters. Know, uh, fantasy meters. Uh, obviously, also the changes to Genji to make him just a bit more robust. Quality of life in improvements for him. And the Gladiators uh, want to use that mirror. Gonna come in on the Genji here. Tracer Genji, the dive is back here for the Gladiators. The Justice are playing double shield. Yeah, and we'll see if the Justice can kind of play around each other, allow Stitch to be the difference maker on the McCree. So, it's like the Tracer for the Gladiators. Trying to get up towards that high ground on the opposite side. Now darts all the way back down once Tuba rotates over space. Tentative. He got halted out into the open for a brief period of time. Give Kevster, give Mirror a position to push in from, and they'll be able to set up just like that. Space tries to force. Looks like an early recall from Tuber and just prevent him from being able to spend time in the back line. That has worked, at least in the short yeah. term. I mean, this is the position that the uh, Justice want, right? They want to fight out of that close quarter type of scenario against the dive. They want to be able to get good value out of their rig and their Batiste. And you see the Gladiators won't dive them when they're inside that low room, inside their bunker. They move to the point, and when the Justice go to the higher ground, even then the Gladiators don't fully commit. They want to be responsive. We'll see what Tuba gets with his pulse from here, but he's being forced out of the fight for the most part. He's waiting for his blink, maybe his recall to come off cooldown. He throws the bomb in there. It's going to be Mortality Fields, and Mirror goes down, but Arx traded out, and Stitch drops in with a flanking position. He gives himself away. Doesn't quite get a kill as quickly as he would have liked, and that well, cat's out the bag, and he's chased down. The Gladiators look really comfortable playing a Brawl style. Let's see if they can finish off the fight. Yeah, as it looks like it's just Tuba, the last one alive here for the Justice. Just trying to keep it going. Kevster takes out Tuba, also taking out Roar with the final blow. So that'll be the Gladiators who will take checkpoint A. 
But the Justice, they do have some ultimates here going into their B defense. Uh, they have the Dead Eye, they have the Gravitic Flux to work with, and Supercharger. So, you think they should be able to get a fight or two potentially with just these ultimates? Justice at least having a chance to build up some of those, avoiding a, a snowball situation by not committing to the fight immediately. Super on that left, you just saw OG there on uh, jump to the right off screen. He's going to be trying to play a flank, so the pincer will consist of OG on one side and space on the other. The rest of the DPS will try and follow the tanks. So this gets spotted out. Tupa probably already sniffed this, but now he knows it's for sure happening. Ark takes a bunch of damage. Kepster, not really the target he would have been looking for ideally, but the rest of the Justice are built a nice little bunker. Bit of an ivory tower up there with a supercharger and the shield, and it works. Stitch is able to get the space he needs to find a couple quick kills. He gets another space as well. Divas desuited. And the Justice uh, should be able to ease into this fight now. Yeah, and they didn't have to use their Deadeye uh, to be able to do it. So they they use a uh, Supercharger, they use their Gravitic Flux, Tuba, for the Pulse Bomb on a Big Goose here towards the end as the exits come through. Uh, so you'll come back here for the next fight if you're the Justice. You'll have both Support Alts, you'll have the Deadeye in place. Uh, this is where the Gladiators, so they'll have their best chance. Uh, they're probably going to try and put a lot of pressure onto uh, Stitch, uh, force out like a Support Ultimate or two potentially, uh, and then get that Nano Blade online. Gladiator's not too upset about that. They came into the fight with an old disadvantage somehow. Yeah. Despite winning the first. The Shaz Honor as well. This is uh, this is the stuff of legend. And again, we'll see. OG, there's no there's no Waz in the for OG to deal with like Fusions had to, right? So a little bit less threat for the Winston. More upside as well to getting uh, Nano Boosted and going on into the back line. More survivability as a result of no orb of discord okay now we swing we're not splitting so much as the gladiators everyone moving to the left hand side just to try and claim this causeway they kept trying to get up here he still has some armor packs just trying to get by mirror stunned dragon blade went in there with nano boost of course and well there's so many things to get rid of before he can actually get to his dessert and he gets it though aim god goes down mirror finds a second with a swift strike and og now can just clear this point up the Gladiators find uh, victory here, at least on this attack, with the Nano Blade. Two ticks for them now as Ark's going to try and come in over the top side. Nice pick on Shazler. That is big. It's only Big Goose here for healing, so the Gladiators need to push up now and complete these kills, otherwise the number's going to quickly turn against them. Janu forced back. Kevster couldn't find enough damage here on towards the enemy Diva, and the loss of the Ana, look how much it hurts the Gladiators. Oh, it's a huge loss. They're going to get Space d here. The rally from Big Goose just trying to keep everybody as healthy as possible. The Reaper switch is well helping the Justice. That'll be a Pulse Bomb from Kevster on a Roar. Gets him low. They're not able to finish the kill off, though. There it is. This comes back on the Reaper trades at the very least, but Space is still there on the point. Ark's going to go for a rally now and try and stay around a little bit longer, and Janu has returned to the fray. Space steps back, he's low. Huge biotic grenade there from Aim God switching to the Ana. Quite fortuitous timing, and a big oh. slip down across the point as well. Kevster is lights out, literally. Stitch runs him down and finishes him off. And some clutch plays from some individuals here from the Justice that keep them afloat. Yes, it's a really nice switch. Uh, from Stitch onto Reaper when you get him in the close quarters, especially when Shaz is off of the Ana. They just don't have enough healing to deal with the tank busting that Reaper can do. Uh, and then, like you mentioned, Aim God really with some big plays on the Ana there at the end. Shaz back to the Ana now, having switched briefly to the Lucio for speed. He was just trying to get back in the fight, right? Uh, they thought they had an opportunity to close it out, uh, but he was definitely wrong. Stitch standing up here, five final blows, three deaths, staying on the Reaper. We fancy a bit of Death Blossom action. Only really space that can shut that down. Or Big Goose with a stun. And Tuba, yeah, doesn't play here if he doesn't have a bomb to deliver. Sees the Diva, cleverly backs away with space. I mean, you've got to wake up pretty early in the morning if you've got to pull one over on that guy. Defense Matrix covered the Pulse Bomb. Raw now, a little bit careful, has to back up. Amira gets himself a Dragon Blade. No Nano to back it up, though. And the Gladiators are spending, Matt. Spending on Ultimates here with Primal Rage as well. Yes. Kevster looks for a Pulse Bomb kill, doesn't find it, but Ark is down. They kind of have to. This is their best window to close it out. They have a tick. They only need one more to take a permanent progress to take the point. And with 50 seconds left, they have to start investing heavily. Gladiators start the round looking very good now. Somewhat less convincing as they've been slowed down towards point B. Stitch, oh, stunned immediately, yep. The Gladiators had all the tools they needed to interrupt when the Reaper tried to come in for the death loss and it was cut painfully short for the Justice. Another sleep dive attempt here. Ark goes down to a flail from the other side and Big Goose wants to push on up. Raw has to go over the top here. He's low. D-suit now on towards Johnny who can't contest 
and there's 17 seconds left as the Gladiators finish the map. Good point B defense though from Washington. Uh, much better than their control game. Uh, the point A defense wasn't great. Uh, the, the Gladiators were able to take that. But once the point B defense came in, a lot of really good switches from the Justice and they were able to cycle through their ultimates effectively to be able to burn a lot of that clock down to 17 seconds. Uh, it's just whether now they can show the playmaking on the offensive end to put together a good side. Such different compositions we've seen from these two as well. The Justice, they don't look like they want to sort of factor Winston in, which is fine. I mean, teams are not really forced to go away from double shield if they can make it work. In theory, I mean, you know, you can punish enemy Winstons pretty effectively, uh, even without uh, the inclusion of Zenyatta for Robo Discord. But Justice get forced off. They kind of get finagled out of their position, swindled from uh, their ideal sort of fighting area. And then had to sort of, I mean, as defenders, they had to attack, which just got really awkward for them. But when they held on defense, you saw how much uh, emphasis Matt, they put around Stitch and keeping him defended, making sure he's got a supercharger in the back corner. And he really benefited from it. Yes, and, uh, now we will see what the Justice decide to do on offense, whether we see a die from them. Stitch on the Sombra would be a, a good shout. We've seen some great Sombra play from him in the past. Uh, as the Gladiators, they're going to go with a defensive dive option here. So, uh, something we haven't seen uh, from the Gladiators, uh, really. I like it, though. Because they bring in the right Kepster, a new player. But uh, this is a look we have not seen from them in the past. I, I really like it. A few, teams, a few teams do like this. I know the Outlaws played this a bunch, the defensive dive, uh, not long ago, and obviously Philly has always been a fan of it, right? If you can make it work with OG on the Winston, then why not? Yeah, no, and you can make it work for point B as well, uh, right? You can continue to run the Sombra throughout the map. And it looks good against the, uh, uh, off it, an enemy dive cop, right? If you feel like you have better cohesion. It looks better than going up against like a Reinhardt or something awkward like that on defense. Kepsi gets aim god. Here's, yep, here's the Echo. She's back. Uh, you, you get uh, space gets demacked and then takes out Stitch, though. I was going to say you're going to lose space, but uh, there goes Roar. So oh, man. first fight will go in favor of the Gladiators. Kev's nice. trying to fight off a little bit more than he could chew there. He backs up. Space will get remacked before the next fight begins by the looks. So really no harm done to the Gladiators, even though it was a little messy. That's what you're sort of dealing with, playing defensive dive. So see now, uh, coming into the next fight, Tuba did a nice shot building up towards the blade thus far. They're not really close enough to a nano, but you may be able to blade early knowing there's going to be no EMP, no support ults on the other side. Chevster. wonder where this duplicate's going. Maybe another Winston. That'll Probably. be pretty good insurance against a, uh, a Dragon oh. Blade. Again, the audacity. Kevster <laughs> has played already. Straight to the back line. He's found one. He's looking for more. Not quite on Aimgod, but Aimgod's struggling. Focusing Beam will claim him. And there is nothing that is remotely okay about that, that I can think of. That was all wrong all the time. So OG able to get back to safety as well, as that is a interesting use of the duplicate. Usually we always see like a tank because of the larger HP pool. Uh, he goes straight to Genji and basically like one dash and uh, a right click, an alternate fire, and he has a blade. And he's able to make it out with his life. Yeah, and Tuba's like, but I had one too. I've been holding on to it. Now that window may even have been lost, Mira is pretty close to an EMP. You can get a layer in the fight. Tuba. Oh, okay. OG now with the uh, with a nano boost. OG's okay. It's primal to work with as well. Dragon Blade probably won't be used now while Winston's so deep. It goes now. Just to nice. get out. Tuba Play. catches Kevster early this time. Oh, it looks good. Tuba leads the marching band in. Four kills with the blade there. Nice combo, Aim God gets the nano boost where it needs to be. That was sick, able to get the Echo up in the sky and then three players down on the ground. Huge play there from Tuba, which will allow the Justice to take this first checkpoint. Four minutes and 23. So let's let's kind of assess what they have to work with moving forward. They don't, they don't really have much going into this fight. The Gladiators should be able to start getting rolling with some ultimates. And we should see a lot of what we saw from the Justice on defense and now from the Gladiators. EMP, a really good ultimate to just kind of cycle through. There's going to be an EMP. It's going to connect with four players straight away. So this is a fight that the Gladiators, they'll be able to win. Uh, now the Gladiators, by winning this fight relatively cheaply, you will be able to kind of hold on to your rally. Uh, space, once he gets a mech back, is very close to a self-destruct. Uh, so, so really good start here for the Gladiators' defensive point B. I mean, there's nothing better than uh, winning a fight not only with just using one ultimate, but also a fight in which the enemy tries to use ults on you, you know? Stitch, Pulse Bomb didn't really get too much there, but 
That is about as thrifty as you can be whilst essentially guaranteeing yourself a team fight winner. Where was that, Chaz? Looks like an extreme range was able to find Stitch. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's brutal, right? It's not like super uh, rare. Uh, uh, Tracer, very susceptible to just random fire from a Zen, but a lot of ultimates being used here. That'll be a space self-destruct. Big Goose ends up popping the rally. As this is going to allow you to get uh, another Primal, potentially. It's going to allow you to farm up another EMP, oh, too. Oh, no. Had the Gladiators debated themselves here. But Johnny looks so good on the Diva in that fight. Now, Raw gets a nicely timed uh, Primal Raid. Good transcendence. It had to be there, but the Bionic Grenade. Nice, the healing. Great response from Aim God. The Gladiators were just struggling, scrabbling, trying to get back to the point. They thought they'd be okay with the transcendence, but they were wrong. Pulse Bomb from Stitch will claim the kill on Mira, even though it was stuck to OG yeah. in Primal Rage. And now he is running absolutely rough shot over the Gladiators. This is the justice many people have been waiting for, including the Salty fan that just tweeted at me about not being nice about their team. How about this one? Here's a blade. Wrecking Ball already taken down. Space removed. And the justice, they've got time. In that bank. Yeah, I think the Gladiators just got way too over-aggressive there. Uh, they they kind of thought they had this game locked up. They were, uh, they were like, I mean, the way to look at it is like they were being aggressive farming ultimates. They thought that the Justice were so far away that they would either not invest some of their own or invest them, but drag the fight out long enough where they would have another full defensive stand. Uh, that doesn't come true for the Gladiators. So Gladiators now will go on offense. Only a minute to go. The Justice... Uh, in a position to potentially win this map. And this map is huge because, uh, like we were mentioning in the last series, uh, because of map differential, you have the you have the opportunity for the Gladiators to not be able to catch up to a team like the Vancouver Titans in terms of map differential here. Yeah, I mean, painful for the Gladiators who, I mean, they're at 5-6 and six right now, right? They're chasing 500. This is a 3-12 and 12 team. Obviously, the Justice have had some... A period of reformation. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I was talking about more of the Summer Showdown standings where we just saw the Titans get to 2-1 and one with a plus 3. The Gladiators are 1-1 one and one, uh, with a 0 map differential, yeah. right? So I mean, they sure, needed five the 3-0 here. At 5-6, and six, you expect to be, you know, in that top echelon of teams, right? Yeah, Especially sure. when, it, when, when you come to these kind of uh, matches in the Summer Showdown. Like, they... Anything less than just the dominant victory here for them will probably be unhappy with, but... But when the we way have, that they played, we, they created holes. We have seen the Gladiators struggle against teams uh, who, who you'd categorize as not some of the most impressive in the league, right? Uh, they've yep. struggled against... Uh, they lose to Boston uh, when Boston was really kind of at their worst. So uh, I would not count the Justice out of the series completely just yet. Mira will test the waters for a time and build his ult with some long-range shuriken throwing. I believe that's what you do. You throw it. You do anything else. And, uh, okay, Shaz may have the option to rotate to the high ground here. Kempster probably wants to be able to, you know, flank around the long way, but Roar's taken way too much damage early on. They'll chase this. Can they keep Roar alive? There's no Batiste here, so no immortality field, despite that. The Justice able to weather that little uh, assault quite nicely in space, has the take to the skies to avoid getting taken down, and he can't Matrix OG. Nice stuff from the Justice. They burst forward, Matt, just at the right time. Yeah, too much damage out on OG. They're not able to keep him up. This will be a Nano Blade coming in from Tuba here at the end, but not even necessary. The D-Mag on the space with their minute on the clock. The Gladiators get absolutely nothing. That is nice. That is extremely nice from the Justice. Stitch on the McCree. Uh, definitely something to get fans of yesteryear excited about. And Tuba on the Genji looks... Very, uh, very solid. And the Genji there is a long play, but it ends up working out for them at the start because uh, what the Genji provides there is uh, it, it provides the dive uh, a little bit, right, to kind of access some of the back line at the beginning. But what a, it, it's almost like an insurance policy for point B because with, let's say, the Gladiators are able to take that, they go over it over point B, you have a Nano Blade on point B with, uh, you know, 20, 30 seconds left to be able to close it out. So you still feel like you're in a good spot uh, if you're the Justice, if things got to worst case scenario. So... Uh, having the Genji there at the start, wise play there for the Justice. 12 final blows for Stitch, 12 final blows for Tuba. Um, for a total of 35 on the Justice, so they are doing what they need to do in these kind of compositions to, to complete these kills. A little bit quiet for Mira, uh, his last, uh, this last round or so. Who does with the Sombra? Defensive Sombra. This is interesting, they want to burn as much clock as they can, but... Is this really the play when you have to full hold on point A? So, I, I think it can be extremely effective, the Sombra here. Uh, you're putting a lot of pressure on uh, Kevser in terms of the overall damage output from the damage dealers. Uh, but, 
having that EMP maybe twice, three times here with three minutes on the clock, uh, and then with Tuba tries to go in, the ability to hack, I think is huge here for the Gladiators on defense. So if it works in the first fight, if the Gladiators win the first fight, then they've got a higher chance of holding out over a longer period of time if they get cheap wins with EMP. And I mean cheap in, in both senses of the term, don't worry. That it works. Stitch on the Tracer here, harassing. It's like a swarm of hornets, not the killer ones in the northeast. These are a little bit less lethal right now. Two are doing much the same thing, so it is definitely the Justice trying to feel things out a little bit here. Whip shots coming through, knocking them back. OG tries to get a little bit aggressive here. The Gladiators commit to something. OG, can he get away? Can Space keep him alive with the Defense Matrix? That's crucial. They OG slowly, are. slowly gets healed up, Matt. Mirror's close to an EMP. This is what the Gladiators want. They want long fights. Yeah, I mean, Aim God's already built up towards his nano boost. Tuba's going to get very close to his blade here soon. We'll see how everything times up with this uh, EMP. Okay, a little bit early on the nano boost here, and then the EMP. Maybe this was intended. Tuba... If he gets away, then this may be worth. He doesn't have the nano boost to work with. OG. Oh, space. Again. The guy. Nicely done. Eats up that pulse bomb. And, well, Tuba holds the uh, blade. Not, doesn't really have much choice. Can't use it in this fight. We're down uh, to a minute and 50. So the bad part here is, uh, you know, you've held on to this blade now, which is great. But they're going to have rally. And then mirror is already 40% to another EMP. So let's say you use Blade and it doesn't work. The other team ends up using the, uh, the Rally. Uh, you're in a spot where you're just kind of running directly into the, the EMP. Yeah, I mean, Tuba missed the wave as well of that Nano Boost. See so uh, what the early kills in this fight look like now. As the Justice, they're already committing with the Rally, as are the Gladiators. They get down in response. Translocate out the mirror. Didn't fancy being caught by Tuba. Yes, he still has the Blade. Reluctant to draw it. It's an antique and all. Yada yada. self destruct over the top, and here it is. Tuba oh. trying to go in, but Space gets two. And Tuba was already hit with a bionic grenade. This is. Oh, the Justice. A huge chance at a map win here. May go by the wayside. Right. And Mira, he's close to another EMP, Matt. I'm saying it a lot, but it's true. So you have you have Nano for the next fight. Uh, you have to probably. You have to Nano Roar. Off chance, you Nano Stitch. Uh, try and burst down somebody. But still, I mean, they're going to have the Duplicate plus EMP for this next fight. Uh, they're just giving Armor Pack Samir to try and let him just free farm this EMP, which oh. he's going to be able to do now. Nano the Winston and hope for the best. They're playing for the Justice right now. Oh, okay, Tuba with that blade? Okay, I'm here for it. Nice biotic grenade there from Aim God. Brawls have to get himself a couple. Mira slows down, gets a hack on Tuba. So is the health packs. We can't get topped up. And OG finds him there. Oh, it's perfect from the Gladiators. They make it so hard for those self-sufficient flankers of the Justice to get the healing they need by hacking their health packs to take it out their supports. And now Kevster finishing blow on Janu's mech. And the Gladiators, they pick the Sombra. It's risky. If it doesn't work in the first fight, it never will. But it does. It plays out beautifully. And Janu now sits on a health pack. He's hoping for a mech back. Aim got knocked off the point. The Moira comes in here. A short stint indeed. And OG now with the Primal Rage to create some more space. Big Goose getting harassed, taken down by Stitch, and Tuba found Shaz. Space now on OG trying to step forward. Stitch needs to stay alive just a little longer. Just a little would have been enough. But no, the Justice missed an opportunity to get a map win on Volskaya and a draw. It shall be. Yeah, so they, you know, they were in a position to win that, the Justice, but just a really good defensive plays. They really, the all of this overtime defense from the Gladiators, the Sombra pick, like you mentioned, is risky, uh, but it works out uh, in the end for the Gladiators, and they get the draw. Yeah, a couple things uh, definitely worked in favor of the Gladiators there. Space with a, a huge uh, self-destruct to really yeah. set up uh, a, a defense, and where you had a you had an Anablade in Genji. Like, yeah, well, you had a Dragon Blade in Genji. He was definitely looking That's, a little bit scary. It's what you're playing for if you're the Justice. I mean, you got exactly what you wanted, right? Uh, you're playing that is your win condition there, is that uh, Nano Blade, and they're just not able to do it. But I mean, then we're seeing, you know, Genji getting nanoed without having Blade quite available. By the time he gets Blade, he's been stunned so long that so the nano already retires. Some sync issues there potentially for the Justice. And some of the timings aren't lining up on their combo plays. Let's see if they can uh, tidy up a little bit and tighten the wing nuts as we head into a break. We'll break down the action so far. And on the other side of it, Map 3 awaits us.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. For auto, home or renter's insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Welcome to the Game Break, presented by Pringles Wavy. Zoe here, joined by Custa and Reinforce, and the Gladiators are up 1-0, and oh, because we just got to witness a draw on Volskaya, quite a back and forth. So uh, let's just talk about what we already saw. Li Zhang, uh, we started out seeing a lot of aggression from the Gladiators, to the point where it felt a bit, I hate to say that word, but it felt a bit YOLO, as the young kids say. Uh, yeah, bit YOLO? Say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. I mean, you could also describe it as chaotic, like it was, yeah. it it was full blown LH cloudy. Like it was just, <laughs> it, this is so typical cloudy. Like they were all over the place. They were flanking, and not even cloudy alone. It was also bird room was going for flanks. It just felt like it was all over the place. But they like channeled this chaotic energy as a team rather than as individuals, and they just made it work together. It was a bit. I'm a, I'm a bit hesitant, but it, it was some Vancouver Titans OG energy in <laughs> yeah. there. And I love to see it because we don't get to see it that much uh, in this day and age of Overwatch when the, the skill level is so high. But, I mean, they were really out there on Li Jiang Tower and it was so much fun to see LH Cloudy uh, just going all over the place, trying to hit shatters <laughs> and targets. doing his thing. But that's the thing, right, with such a strategy. Like, if one person makes a mistake, it usually doesn't work out. But if everyone makes the same mistake together, like, if they're, they're all on the same wrong page together, it can still work. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, it's honestly... The team game is you have honestly, to be on the same so page. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's a philosophy that a lot of uh, Overwatch teams and stuff like that do it. If you make the wrong call but everyone does it, it can work out. But if you do 
the right thing separately, it doesn't really work. Yeah, so therefore, that it's, 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 it's all about being on the same page. <laughs> That's and I, I think the Gladiators have had a lot of success with being aggressive, and I think it's something that they've made their identity in a way that, like, we're going to play aggressive, and it works for them. We saw how well it worked for them on Li Zhang. They sort of uh, smother the Washington Justice with just the sheer amount of aggression they're putting. Burnering's flanking right off the bat into the back line. Uh, so it's really good, but then we saw them get caught off guard. Uh, when they were, had their second point defense on Volskaya, it cost them a lot. They went aggressive. They wanted to make an early play with the Nano. They ended up getting picked off, and that is how Washington Justice ended up getting a really fast time. So I like it, and it is their identity, so they should keep doing it, but I really want them to see, you know, pull back on the reins every now and then because it is costing them, you know, a map that they could have easily won. How do we feel about the subs coming in from the Gladiators? Taking Birdring out of the mix and, and bringing Mirror in? Were you guys on board with that? Costa had thoughts on this. Oh, uh, yeah. I, 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 when <laughs> I'm I saw, asking when I saw Mirror, I don't know what he said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, like, when I see Mirror, I'm like, I like that they brought Mirror in to play the Genji. And then I saw Kev's and I'm like, what? wait, wait, they took Birdring out? Like, I, I, Kev's is a good tracer, right? But Birdring has been on top form as of late. His tracer has been phenomenal. One of the shining lights of Gladiators through a lot of this negative, you know, losses that they've been having. So I don't like it. Kevster played fine, but I, I don't think uh, Birdring should ever come out of this lineup. Yeah, maybe they're just you know benching their star player to give you know integrate a new contender's talent into their team. It seems to be working out for all the teams in Overwatch League. Ah, <laughs> uh, guys, you know what's always working out. Crunch time presented by Pringles Wavy. That was the lamest transition I could Wow, make. no, that was <laughs> sick. That was sick. You know what else was sick? Great transition. Uh, <laughs> of course, I'm talking about Tuba's uh, 4K Nanoblade. And you know what? I, th I feel like this is the first time he actually makes his present felt in a series. So far, yeah, I, I, I can't really say I've seen that before. Yeah, I feel like, so Tuba's another one of those players that hasn't really thrived in the double hit scan DPS meta. He, you know, we've seen a bit of his tracer and it's been okay, but it doesn't really match up to these top tier tracers we've been seeing. He looks more comfortable on this flex DPS. He looks good on this Genji. This is a great 4K. Like that's a dashing into the air, taking the echo out. He gets hacked, but he still manages to get, you know, four people. And it's just really good to see the, you know, these flex DPS players coming out of their shell and playing something they're comfortable on and really, you know, shining when they haven't really get, been given the opportunity it kind of gives me GOATS-esque vibes where a lot of players came in last year but didn't really make their presence felt because they didn't really thrive, you know, playing the three support, three tank meta. So I really like to see Tuba sort of prove himself as a player. Yeah, and that was the point I was going to make as well, that this probably is the first opportunities he's had to really showcase his preferred hero pools because Tuba, when he came in and was picked up by Wizard Young way back last year, that was because he had a good Genji, a Doomfist, a Farah, and that is the heroes that Tuba really wanted to play. But then we entered the triple tank, triple support meta, and now we've had double shield and hit scans and maze and stuff tuba hasn't really slotted into those metas perfectly but now he can play this genji and he's playing with roar on the winston and Janu on the diva so this is actually a meta that sort of fits the washington justice and i mean i know they're down oh, oh, oh and one but theoretically this could be an upset match if gladiators don't close it out properly because i think this is when the washington justice are at their most comfortable so far this season I mean, we're now heading into Rialto, so definitely possibilities to bust out of Aura, play some more Genji. What do you guys want to see from each of those teams, Kassa, starting with you? I just think Washington looked much more comfortable on the Genji. I just want to see more of that. Farah's really hard to play these days, especially with how prominent the hit scans are. So just stick to what they've been playing, play the Winston, play the Diva, like Johnny said, and get Tuber on that Genji. Yeah, and for the Gladiators, I think you just kind of have to tone things down a little bit. I think that indiv on an individual ba basis, the LA Gladiators are better man for man, and I think they should just play to their strengths, try to execute, don't try to push your aggression too much. I know your style is very chaotic, but try to tone that down and minimize mistakes, and I think you'll easily win and beat the Washington Justice. I love that chaos is apparently a play style. Um, <laughs> I, I, oh, yeah, it's great! Why not? <laughs> yeah! It works. That's my place too. Always, you know, it, it's but it works. I love it. Yeah. yeah, that's I I can see you as chaotic neutral. No, chaotic he was. What? You, no, you didn't play against him. Dude. He was chaotic evil, pinning from the other side of the map. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well Costa got uh, pinned a few times. <laughs> It's hard if you're on the receiving end, isn't it, Costa? Yeah. Either way, uh, we're done here on the desk, and that means we're heading back to the match. Can't wait to see which team will be running away with the W today. For all the action, we once more hand it back over to Mr. X and Uber.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. Big crunch, big flavor. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. A draw in map number two sees us enter half time at only zero to one here if you're a Washington Justice fan. But Matthew, as we return now to the series, it definitely feels like there was more signs of life from the Justice Absolutely. in that Voskaya map. Yes. And Johnny kind of pointed out, you know, during Watchpoint, Reinforce said that Look, I think this might actually be a meta, or at least, you know, like a micro meta inside this series, or maybe it's map based, that benefits the Justice more. What do you think about that? Uh, he, he might be right. Uh, I think in certain situations, I think uh, absolutely Johnny could be right. This, uh, where uh, we cast the Gladiators game against the Atlanta Reign, this is back uh, two weeks ago now, but they yep. were really good in that series when they were using that uh, Reinhardt Rush type of competition. They were pretty much even everywhere else. Uh, so I I'm looking to see now that uh, OG is still in the game. They do have a sub coming in. It'll be Bird Ring that comes in here for Beaver. Uh, but can the Justice take advantage of this? Because uh, the Gladiators, that they do look uh, defeatable when they're at this type of uh, composition. Although we yeah, haven't I mean, seen them with Bird Ring in with OG yet. That is true. Yes. I mean, and Kevster, how about him? What a rise to uh, yes. sort of start him now. Like he looks like he has got the... Uh, the centerpiece spot on this roster, especially with uh, without hero pulls in the mix, which is a great sign for him and his career. Um, I mean, we can talk about the justice, what we saw. I thought, like, Janu on D.Va is always fantastic. I mean, that that is yeah. 
what he was known for. You know, back when we were playing GOATS, he was one of the best. He was MVP candidate. Let's not forget that. And Stitch on the McCree is like one of my favorite heroes to watch him play, and, uh, going and, all the way back to the old days. And I would say as well with uh, regards to Stitch, uh, we didn't see him get a ton of play last year. Uh, so, like, I, I don't want to say he's like rusty, but like I imagine if he wasn't getting consistent play last year, he wasn't getting consistent screen time. This year, he didn't really have much of a start at all with the Titans. So, like, you're kind of getting back into game shape, so to speak, and also with a completely new team. Uh, so, we won't know the potential of Sitch probably for another few weeks. But maybe you're watching this. Maybe you're a fan of the Justice or the Gladiators, neither or both. You're probably still fairly bullish on, on these two rosters. The Gladiators, for me, uh, they always look very good, but there's always just something missing. Just a little something that stops them from being, like, a consistent, dominant team. Now, in fairness, these teams... You know, it's not easy to put on consistent dominant performances when all, quite often you know, the style of play changes week to week, right? That is one of the challenges of being in the Overwatch League. You have to be adaptive. Your, your coaching staff are like hamsters on wheels trying to churn out, you know, new setups, strategies and the like. The teams that can thrive in those scenarios are, you know, rapidly rising to the top. So let's keep our eyes on the, the setup here now. Bird Ring and OG, of course, coming in. We haven't seen them on the map together yet this series. The Ash Reinhardt play, but for the Justice... The Widowmaker from Stitch. That's exciting. Yes, uh, we'll see Stitch on the Widow, what positions he takes here on defense, uh, at least at the start. And then the Gladiators, what are they going to run? They're going to run, yep, OG on uh, Arisa this time. So really no Reinhardt play when he's in. This is why they wanted to bring in uh, Kepster, by the way. So now Bird Ring can play the Ash, and they can also have uh, somebody who's extremely comfortable playing the Tracer. All right, so the Justice... Trying to push too far forward, but maintain the high ground. It's quite important. And uh, Stitch wants an angle, but there are shields everywhere. It's just shields. And he still finds Shaz despite that. Nicely done. And the rest of the Justice help him work away at those barriers. So he's able to find a clean kill. That is big. No Batiste, no problem. No immortality field. Forget about it. Yes, you have to wait. And uh, the Batiste is really the only healer here for the Gladiators. You can hear, heal some of these uh, players like a, let's say, Kevster a little bit further away. You just have to bring uh, armor packs and not enough to heal everybody, especially when they're going to play such a long-range comp around the Widow. Bird ring on the boulevard. Strutting his stuff in the high heel boots. I'm not sure I'd call it a boulevard. It's more of like a catwalk. It's a figurative boulevard because he's about to show off his stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, he's a man okay. about town, you know? Well, what about Stitch? Because he's showing off. Yeah, sort of, but he's oh. showing off in the corner. Jinx, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's not not much of a fashion runway for him. It's more of just, uh, you know, cybersecurity professional doing it from the shadows. That's how it's done. Uh, Aim God loses immortality field space. Has to back up a heck of a lot here. He is uh, under extreme scrutiny. But Kevs is able to get rid of Aim God. This could relieve some of the pressure until Tuba pulled the Dragon Blade. Everything changed when the Weave Nation attacked, they say. Tuba gets rid of space as well. And clean up here will be pretty comfortable for him. He can linger as long as he likes. Yep, so uh, that'll be another fight win for the Justice as his defense looked really good. Genji Widow. It's uh, Genji. Yo, uh, he's so good at Genji, Genji in dude. general. It, it's really odd to see Genji back in the mix, but uh, just it, that's why I think you see with Overwatch. Like sometimes it's uh, people are scared of balance changes because like they just tweak one little thing well, and all of a sudden a character becomes extremely it is, strong. It is a little thing, but it, it, think about play it like. Giving players more agency over how their abilities work is always a huge quality of life increase. Think about when they changed Diva's defense matrix from like a set cooldown, hard cooldown, to now a resource you can toggle. Yes. So now, now the deflect can be canceled when you want. You can be way more reactive. You're not stuck in an animation. You can do a lot more, uh, which is great for a high skill cap hero like Genji. So, uh, you know, people have taken back to him. It's just so good to see him back in the meta, as it were. Kev loses the pulse from the Johnny there. He gets a nice kinetic grasp. He's going to get held aloft for a moment, then a drop down. The creation does not connect from him, and OG is just surrounded by Justice players. Washington look extremely good with this setup, Matt. They get so much space from Tuber and Raw pushing they're, up, and Stitch is free to do damage. They're crushing the Gladiators here. Uh, th th this is not close, as the Justice have looked really good. The Gladiators have gotten absolutely nothing done. They have no ultimates here with a minute to go. Uh, just a supercharger, but you can play around some of these walls here, and then you're going to have the Justice with the other Dragon Blade. Kev's to be sneaking. And Beacon. Stitch, I think, just noticed him there. I think he had a look. Obviously, uh, player skins don't show up for the individual, so it's not like he saw this purple blur. He had to see it was Tracer with their normal skin. 
dash upward there for Tuvo. He was hoping to get a Dragon Blade maybe whilst in midair. That, uh, yeah, that didn't quite go the way he would have liked it to. Stitch has to back up now. Hyperspheres nipping in his heels. Just trying to find maybe a pick on a big target or a chunk worth of damage. Just a headshot will be enough here. Roar is able to push them all back in. Uh, Gladiators, um, are you okay? Where, where has... Where have the Gladiators gone? They, they were so full of swagger, so confident at the start of this series, and now they look like kittens, Matt. Mewling kittens! No, I mean, they're getting dunked on. As uh, Kev Sir just trying to stay alive, the recall. Oh, Tuba goes out. and finishes him off. Gravitic flux here from Janu. Is, this has been fantastic from the Justice. So, you know, the Justice, they are, like uh, Janu was mentioning, uh, they are very close to being, like, in the lead of this series. Uh, and and it wouldn't even really be that shocking. Like, the first map they lose when the Gladiators are running that rush composition, which we've talked they're very good at. Mm -hmm. uh, since they've gone away from that, the Justice have really been in control of this. The draw is one that was just unfortunate. They played it pretty poorly. Uh, this is... They, they should be able to, to get this and at least get this map on the board. You know what? Like, people are so critical of Raw... Uh, and sort of say, like, they have a reason to, to be fair, but he's a passive player. Like, he's not super aggressive, but he's not flashy, but this is a composition that actually gets to utilize his strengths, right, as a safe player yeah. with this Orisa, right, to give Stitch so much room. He creates space just by his presence. Obviously, that's what main tanks do, but then once Tuba wants to go forward, he can go with him. But for the most part, Roar is just playing very solid, very fundamental Overwatch, and, and doesn't have to to take the spotlight. Tuba's one happy to do that for him. He, he comes out with eight final blows on the Genji with one death. It's uh, an impressive performance on the Genji. It's a yeah. It's uh, really, and, and Stitch is one we talked about because Tuba's been with the Justice the whole year. Yep. Uh, we haven't seen like really bright spots uh, from him consistently. Well, uh, I mean, look, he had to sit sideline to Corey and Stratus for a while, you know? That's true. Uh, but he, he did play over Stratus a decent amount of the time. I mean, he was coming in pretty consistently. It was all the May that we saw from Stratus that sort of necessitated yeah, uh, that. Some some people just, uh, well, some players, like, uh, May is just pretty difficult to get down because it's so much about, like, a wall placement. You're so focused on that. If you don't get the good walls, you don't get good value out of it where uh, a character like Genji, especially with the way they're using him, he gets loaded up with armor packs and then it's uh, go in there and make a play. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I don't know how, uh, like, tons of armor really helps you uh, in stealth situations, but... You know, this is that press W composition, right? Get the Genji in there, follow it up with, you know, timely mortality field usage if you need it. Make sure Janu is right there pushing up. Just like this, take space! And they've done just that. They claim the high ground for their own now. Might be just around a corner, some Gladiators players remaining, but look at this, Stitch, so much space. No threat to him whatsoever. It's hard for Kevster to cross those gaps, Matt. He doesn't have verticality, he needs to blink to do it. And now Tuba gets to work from the other end. It's a pincer. And they have not been able to... Like, look at, look at Tuba just being able oh, to... So much damage and whatever yeah, he wants. And the, the payload just moving on in. Stitch with a headshot on the Kebster. Is, uh, this should be the Justice closing out Rialto in dominant fashion. See what I mean about something's just missing there? The Gladiators look so good until they really, really don't. Uh, but that that's not to take any credit away from the Justice there. You know, Johnny almost foreshadowed it, right? Yeah. This meta looks really good for them. Tuba played a bunch of DPS. Uh, didn't really, you know, I would say didn't really light the world on fire with any of those picks, but maybe it was the Genji. That's uh, what we need to be waiting for to see him really shine. And I wonder if we see the Gladiators go back and run LH Cloudy again, uh, depending on what the map is and the certain type of compositions you can run on that map. Bringing in that Reinhardt may be a difference maker yet again. Yeah, I mean, it's an option for them. Next map would be Hollywood uh, in the series, in which the Justice are 0 and 4 on this season so far. So no wins for the Justice there. The Gladiators <laughs> haven't really fared all that much better. Uh, it will be a decided map. So you know, this is a kind of weird setup where sometimes you have like, uh, you know, maybe you keep Cloudy in case there's another map 5, right? Yeah. In case there's a decided map and it's going to be control. Well, the decided map in this series now is not going to be control at all. It's going to be a hybrid. So stick around, ladies and gentlemen. The winner of the next match takes it all. And the Justice, all of a sudden, are a real shot at taking the Gladiators down a peg. So stick around. More from this series after these messages. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile.
uh, we still will have control. Gentlemen, uh, to the Overwatch League, map number four is coming right up. And yeah, I had a bit of a sip of the dumb bro juice. And uh, yeah, I, of course, I, cor I corrected you. Everybody knows. Yeah, I but you never, you, you never correct. <laughs> you can correct me live on air. That's also fine. So much Genji play got my head spinning, uh, Matt. And so far, Tuba has really been leading the way. A great map from here on Rialto, but honestly, all the justice look really good. So they're in a position now to actually take the series over. They're going to be in charge, but they'll have to do it on a map they've not won yet yeah, this season. Bit Mitch thought we were running on some kind of uh, time constraint where we would just eliminate the final map. And uh, <laughs> listen, and, and, the way the series go was going, the way the series was going it. earlier on, that may have been better off for all of us. However, now we're starting to get served up a sizzler map. Yeah. A nice, spicy little series but, we'd like to see. Is, uh, we, well, what I was talking about before the break was uh, potentially bringing in uh, Cloudy uh, for uh, Hollywood, but uh, we will not see that. Uh, that is probably because you want the uh, Winston for the second stage yep. of the map, and then maybe the Orisa as well. So let's think back then to Volskaya. I guess that's like the nearest example of maybe good compositions we might see on, uh, at least on point eight defense, if the Gladiators go there. Yeah. They will be defending first. I uh, know they'll be... An offense first, defending. There you go. We got it right. Either way, so maybe they see we see that like Winston defense. I, mean, I don't know if we see the Sombra come out. That seemed like it might have just been an overtime play. Still, that was uh, fun to watch. Yeah. So, uh, good a chance uh, with the Glads on defense. This is probably gonna be some type of a Risa setup. Uh, that's what I would think we're gonna see here. Some type of a Arisa defense setup. Uh, they play like a Arisa plus Sigma uh, from the Gladiators as a. Uh, it, well, this would be odd. I mean, you can still play the Reinhardt, uh, but they've always brought in Cloudy to do that. Uh, surprise! They wouldn't just kind of. It, maybe it they might. feel so bad about Cloudy's like uh, other tanks moving into the other parts of the map. Okay. Well, more charitably, they might actually feel like um, they want to, you know, play Winston on offense. I know it doesn't sound that standard, but. We'll definitely let them get the high ground uh, control on point A. Either way, uh, obviously OG is, you know, well, I wouldn't say he's 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 known specifically for the Reinhardt play. Obviously, Cloudy has that little, sort of brand of aggression. They are going to stick with OG on this map. Have the echo here for Kevser and Birdring on the McCree. So that's going to be fun. See how the Justice respond. They're going to have Ash with some dive. Uber again. He's feeling himself, and I don't blame him. Well, let's see what happens now if they're able to actually control Tuba's Genji play. Uh, they let him just kind of run crazy uh, in the last map, and uh, they make a switch with Birdring over to McCree, so maybe that's enough uh, to really slow down Tuba's Genji, which was dominant. 
Oh, Justice get in a good position enough that one dash is all it takes to get Tuber inside the cafe. Ah, uh, didn't end well for him though. Looks like an accretion was leveled at him. And uh, OG and Co. Now oh, OG does play ahead of uh, space here. He plays behind him. And again, a test of the Justice now as they go from the front side of the point and force back pretty quickly as well. And you see OG just kind of playing these corners. He knows that he can't give up space uh, to this Washington Justice composition because if he does, uh, they're just going to burn a shield down and with nowhere to go, he'd be in a lot of trouble. It's coming around the corner, lands a shatter. That'll be a four-player oh, shatter, but there probably uh, no going to be any follow-up. It's still an amplification, mate. So any form of damage can chunk him down awfully fast. And yeah, there was no follow-up there. In fairness, the air matrix from the Justice wasn't all that impressive. You could just break line of sight from that, but uh, who cares? Kevster copies a Genji and gets 2k with the Dragon Blade. Space here, happy to clean things up and... Yeah, that's all she wrote for that fight. Kevster looking pretty pleased. And I thought, did I hear another Dragon Blade from Kevster before he uh, got knocked out of duplication? It, 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 Maybe. It may have been. We've seen some stuff today where, uh, what was it? I think we saw like a, uh, two Death Blossoms uh, in our last series from uh, Shockwave uh, with one use of a duplicate. So uh, it is possible. It's uh, 2 minutes 15 on the clock. Still here with the Justice. Still a lot of time. But, uh, they have nothing really to work with. Uh, maybe you can go in quick with a rally, uh, so to speak. Rally superchargers. Uh, that is an. Oh, that is so yeah. bad. Yeah. That is so bad. It's an amp matrix with a fire strike through it. Arc like out just as the the little gavel thing's gonna go in the air. The, I don't know what. I don't know what Brigitte's <laughs> weapon is. A little mace gavel. A, sure. The thing that pops a, up in the back of her the head. Uh, it is a hybrid mace and flail, if you're wondering. Sure. It looks like a gavel. She's got a gavel in her back. That's that's the terminology I use. Or maybe it's a morning star. Who and, uh, knows? As soon as it goes up, she just gets nuked down by the fire strike. <laughs> yeah, really unlucky. I mean, it's healing over time for Amelia, right? Uh, there was just no time. Uh, burst damage is king in situations like that. And <laughs> Healing well. over time with no time is not effective. Yeah, <laughs> yeah time, is, time is a requirement. Uh, you guys are learning a lot about Overwatch. That's it. Video games. Tuba tries to drop in here. Oh, oh my bad ring! Some respect, please! Tuba tries to Dragon Blade. The Echo's in the air. He's not able to connect, but uh, Shaz, though, is waiting for him. And a tasty morsel is consumed. The Justice will have themselves 0.8 here in what seems to be just moments. And they go, they lose about three minutes of time there. But look, that's that's acceptable. And conversely, that's respectable. Yeah, it's, uh, no, look, they're, they're able to take the point, get the car going. They... Uh, they now force Gladiator's switch. They'll play the Arisa of their own, and uh, Stitch gonna go to the Widowmaker for some high ground control and really put some more pressure on uh, Kebser. So uh, this will be a little bit easier for him to deal with. So much space as well, right? Ton to work with. Kebster, four final blows. Stitch hasn't found any yet. The dead Eye out of the flux. Kebster wasn't able to be healed up. He didn't get dropped, I think, inside. Yeah, he got dropped on the roof, not inside that immortality field. That's a bit rough. Unlucky. Steve's playing pretty far forward for a Widowmaker now. Needs to watch out for that. Oh, yeah, Matrix, he does get knocked up. And I mean, that was a foregone conclusion there. Steve was already going to lose half of his health and the rest was just a formality for space to clean up. And he is barreling forward, birdering, making use of the space that he creates. Clicking heads. Yes, uh, now the Gladiators get some of this space back. Tuba quite low. The Hyperspheres bank off the wall and He'll get taken out is what the gladiators want to do they want to push up they want to play really close here by the payload they want to make it really costly for the justice uh like if you're the gladiators you get sound like a minute and 30 and then force them to use a blade uh right you'll get another fight with like a minute before that second checkpoint you're in a really good spot if you're the gladiators that's the type of action they're trying to get here stitch he doesn't want to give away his position but good sight lines here are going to be in short supply unless the gladiators push up and even then it's just like a small corridor kevster goes to duplicate doesn't quite work out got a blade but got knocked out of it pretty quickly the focusing beam however builds slightly better results space a push up here doesn't quite know where the widowmaker had gone until shaz picked him off and now he can just chase down the genji easy accretion connection uh, but the Gladiators now, Supercharger Gravitic Flux, you can play really close. This uh, Stitch look like you potentially, you may need to, well, I was going to say, you may need to switch off of the Widow, but now that Bird Ring is on the Widow, you kind of have to respond to this. Where they lose a lot of, uh, with Widow Genji, you really don't have a ton of damage up here close to get the cart going again. 
OG down. He got too low there. Didn't have a chance, uh, unfortunately, to protect himself from that. Amp Matrix got thrown out by Amp God. Follow up was really good. Now, can you really back away from this? Probably not, uh, in the event that there's another Halt coming your way. Well, I, I was talking about the Gladiators winning a fight and making it costly, but they didn't really do that. You still have Supercharger, Gravitic Flux, and Blade available here for the Justice. Yeah, and then they stagger a, a oh. fight with their short hand. They move away from potential reinforcements, but it Whoa. works anyway. Ferdinand getting aimed got that is just gigantic. And that makes it so much easier uh, for Kepster to run in. Maybe they thought they were going to catch them out there? Uh, I mean, it looked dodgy. It looked dodgy from the Gladiators to be sort of down a player, but yes. Kepster getting rid of uh, Stitch was, I think, a momentum shift. Hey, also, I mean, that is a tough spot to blade into, uh, especially when you have uh, the Brigitte there, so... Really difficult. Now the Justice, they don't have much to deal with. It'd be a headshot from Birdring on a four. You see how low Oof. the main tank gets. Losing Shaz there would have been round over yeah. there and then. Body shot. Ah, oh, Stitch! Two body shots and he's down. Looked like the Hulk kept him actually out in Birdring's line of sight. And now he can continue to do work here. Gladiators forcing in on towards Johnny. They lose Shaz here though, so they need to be careful about just how far forward they extend. Kevster, I mean, house money. Again, he's duplicated right now. Janu, yeah, he's down. Just in the extra hypersphere to secure that half health threshold to guarantee a kill upon dropping the enemy Sigma. And now Kevster gets to take to the skies and chase the exo booting. Hard progress here from Roar, though. He's actually able to make it uh, move pretty far. Yeah, and it's getting to a dangerous spot now as well. OG. Does that fortify presently? Tube is close to a blade. This fight can actually get turned around really quickly if he can get that ultimate off. Ooh, they got to armor Look. pack him up. Yep, the brick back yep. in the mix. Wrecking Ball's there as well. Tube is still healthy. Another couple of shurikens. Here we go. Blade in looking for the brick. Stunned immediately though. Still gets the kill. One kill. Won't be enough though. Space meets him with an accretion there. Rock and Tube the just face. liquefies as he goes face first into a rock. A lot OG of extra rid of progress all. though. A lot of extra progress at the end there. Uh, from the Washington Justice, so uh, could have been way worse. Uh, they're able to uh, make it almost to point B. Roar, like, kind of just pushing the payload for a really long time there alone. Uh, gives them a ton of progress there on point B. So uh, that cannot go understated the play there. Uh, to The Gladiators decide to kill the players coming off the respawn and then go back to deal with Roar. It just takes a very long time for them to be able to do it. Maybe it's more of a safe strategy for them to actually, you know, get a defensive uh, sort of hold, but uh, it does mean they have to give up some progress. If they all beeline for Raw, then maybe they get jumped on and lose a fight there. You never know. Either way, the Gladiators have a pretty well-defined win condition now on this map. Ready for In this first of three series, it'll be control where it ends up, and the Gladiators just look head and shoulders uh, ahead of the Justice. So I feel like a win here on Hollywood puts them at a pretty good percentage to come away with a W. Have a look how this went down. Final moments here. This is overtime. Look at this. What a transition. Ah, nice. <laughs> Nicely done. So we talked so much about space in the pre-game for his Diva play, but just uh, really strong at all of the off tanks, right? Sigma, he's been able to pick up uh, rather yeah, quickly. I think the only reason we, we talked about Sigma is just because of how much better his Diva stats were than his Sigma ones. And that's not to say these Sigma ones weren't good though. Yeah, I, I mean, I also think too, you're comparing like uh, him on D.Va as one of the best D.Vas in the league, uh, as opposed to like Sigma, right? So I think you're going to see a big uh, discrepancy in that. This will be just a bunch of players going back to the spawn, changing as soon as they see what's going on. Ah, uh, that's it. Play Orissa for the boys, OG. It's your destiny. I guess I was selfishly wanting to see Johnny versus Space, uh, more of that D.Va. Uh, Head to head. Hanzo in the mix. So we've seen this a little bit today with a Hanzo Tracer. Is Tuba still committing to the Genji? So they'll throw some armor packs on the Tuba. Try and let him get some damage down as uh, Kevster falls to Stitch. So you're going to kind of wait here if you're the Gladiator. You're not going to push this for nothing. Yeah, I don't mind the, I don't mind the Birdwing Hanzo pick here as well, especially after they get past that first choke. It's still relevant sort of through most of the map, or at least all the map that counts as the Gladiators don't even have to finish it here. Just not using your tra not losing your tracer is ideal. Kevster wants to sneak through on that left side. See, he's not flanking right now. Maybe the gladiators just want to press W, and just barrel in, use the front door. Space that is a gigantic kinetic grasp. Yep, big rats for uh, hitting that. <laughs> but Stitch has high ground now. So what, I mean, what does he do with this one now? It, it looks like Birdman didn't want to play up there, so Stitch will try and do something at least with an off angle. 
this is an odd position for the Justice to fight at him because you don't have to be in the line of sight of anything if you're the Gladiators. And Stitch able to get Bird Ring, that's a big pickoff. Yeah. You see how fast so they're able to burn down Roar. I just feel like, Matt, the more that happens, the more you get outmaneuvered, the more likely you are to have a player isolated and picked off. Like, the first kill in that fight was Janu, right? Like, the, the, one of the most durable characters on the oh, side of the Justice. Play this too. Okay, well, I mean, yeah, okay, try and, I guess, get some sort of hold put together. We saw that kind of all-or-nothing play on Volskaya from the Gladiators. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work out. So, Tuba, is he going to be switching? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what you're thinking, right? Maybe it's a switch coming in from Tuba. Uh, because that is a very uh, desperation mode blade. Uh, nothing to combo with it. Uh, they didn't have to use anything for it. Uh, Sitch with another nice shot on the Kevster, but... Gladiators, Mitch. Six ultimates, pretty much, going into this next fight. Uh, yeah, so where, how far up can the Justice push then? Well, that's what of... I was just going to say. Like, the Justice would have liked to play up and try and force some ultimates out, but even if they force, like, one or two, it doesn't matter. Uh, They're going to have so many. They lost the high ground already. Yeah. And the cart's going to move the whole time. They have to basically wrap around and contest the cart, force the Gladiators off this high ground. That's going to be hard with half their team uh, suspended, dangling in midair. Good immortality field placed down there by Amgod. Keeps them up. Two biggest sent flying by a rock. Yeah, they move to the cart now. They want to fight here and not any further back. The Justice have given up enough round already. Three flux. Janu with the look away play. Head first in towards Birdering, who gets accreted. I'm, I'm, I assume that's a word. Janu drops down here. Kinetic grasp. He wants to get to the cart, but he gets a rock thrown at him as well. Still a 6v6. Keep that in mind. It's just been a kind of a staggered fight. But now the damage is starting to come into OG. Can Shaz patch this one up and get that Orisa back in the front line? Great flash on the big goose. He's down. Yes, yeah, so and now we'll see where the Justice decide to go here on defense. Looks like Stitch trying to throw some pressure on the backside, trying to put some shots into space, but space has to use the shield now. Tubo with a reflect and a dash through. Is it enough to want him to blade this? We'll see. It looks like he potentially wants to hold on to it. And, oh, now he gets a dash kill, goes for the blade. Yeah, I mean, with the flux holding everybody in place, all he needs is a couple hits. Nice little two piece there from Tuba. This is going to force the Gladiators back for a time. Kevster. What's the plan, man? You dash away. So Bird Ring now goes to Widowmaker. The payload doesn't have to get much further. See at the top of the screen, that little golden tick doesn't have to get much further. For the Gladiators to take this, he's going to pull out the Widowmaker, which is going to have Stitch Switch as well. So this, okay. you feel like the, if you're the Gladiators, try Bird Ring, a fantastic Widowmaker. I would I would no. definitely favor uh, Bird Ring in the Widow oh, battle, no. as all oh, that is too early pickoffs in favor of the Glads. Uh, list of things that should not happen. That sits pretty close to the top of it. The rest of the Justice have to wait now. They try and buy as much time as they can. Back up around the corner. Try and make it costly. They throw out uh, that amplification matrix by Aim God just to sort of, again, deter any further advances, but uh, that doesn't work for very long. Aim God goes down. Kev's to seen better days, but he's hiding behind the hail bales for the time being, and Janu gets rocked. That'll do it. The Gladiators find a bit more of that form they had earlier on in the series and now put themselves in a position to take the series away. What do you mean? Hollywood. I Pretty one-sided at the end of the day. I thought you told me the series was over after this one. I changed my mind. Oh, you're and extending I phoned, it. I phoned John Spector, and I said, listen, we're going to add an extra map in this series. Uh, oh. For no other reason, then, then we might see Johnny versus Space on Diva. That's all. Okay. I'm okay I'm with clout. it. I have Clout. What's that called? Clout? Yeah. Clout. That would, be, swinging, that would be Clout. Swinging Clout. Yep. Yeah. So, Thanks, John. You're the best, bro. <laughs> so, uh, it, return it, my Ferrari by Tuesday, uh, if you don't mind, though. I, I do want to say that the first control went heavily in favor of the gladiators i but the justice have looked much better throughout it i wonder though like you can't really run the genji as effectively into a reinhardt because obviously reinhardt will just swing at the genji you can't deflect right. it uh, there's not a lot you can do uh so if that comes back into play what do the justice fall back on because they've looked really strong behind tube as genji in the series uh but without it in the mix they've kind of looked average yeah, is it Tubis Genji that leads the way as we head into Busan, or do the Justice, you know, have to revert to what we saw earlier, which was lackluster, or is there something in between? <laughs> they come up with something completely new. Yeah, stick around, you'll find out on the other side of this break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Zipchair Gaming, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League.
Coming into this series, the Washington Justice were on a four-match winning streak and hadn't won any maps so far in the Summer Showdown. But, Matthew, that has changed. Today, yeah. not only do they pick up a, a tight draw midway through the series, but they get themselves a, a, a big map win on Rialto. And they still have a chance to take this series. It would require uh, a sixth map, but it is possible. It, it, uh, it is Busan is our last map here, at least so uh, far. Potentially our last map. Uh, no substitutions for either team. Uh, what it looks like so we will not see cloudy come back in uh where busan you probably do want to play some marisa and some winston at certain times uh, right so that's where you're going to see uh no real reinhardt rush options uh here and even if you did i uh, wanted to play it for a little bit og definitely play the, the reinhardt uh and well obviously we're keeping an eye on space as well because yes. sigma we, we kind of touched on it in that last map matt has looked really really good and i am more worried about what did the justice come up with outside of their genji type of competition because if the gladiators start to prove that they can win team fights consistently when the Genji's in the mix for Tuba, what, where did the Justice go to win these team fights? How many more options do you really have right. after the fact, right? And it's not to say that all of these maps are necessarily great for Genji. You know, like he doesn't really maybe always get to make use of his ability to traverse from low to high ground easily. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind as well. Is that going to be the pick? I mean, Tuba looked. Uh, okay, well, in fairness, Tuba looked quite good on Ash as well. Uh, sorry, Echo earlier on in this series. So. No, Stitch gets to play some what he likes. We've seen McCree on uh, on this map before, of course. Mecha Base will be our first stage here in Busan. And yeah, the Justice... Look, the Destiny is in their own hands here. They still have a chance to make something of this run in the Summer Showdown. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, so with the uh, first point being Mecha Base, this is one where I would have thought you could have ran Reinhardt on. So we'll see what the Gladiators decide to do. This is one where you can get right up towards the door, rush right in. Anzo would be interesting and, and viable. Yeah. You can see how that makes sense. We already saw it earlier on today as well, but Jerry looked quite good on the Hanzo on Anamura, I think it was. So a ton of, I think a ton of variation here between these team compositions. That's kind of the fun part as well. That first week where Hero Pools uh, sort of Go away. Get switched off is like everyone's just like trying to see what they come up with, right? There's ideas, but you don't get to practice them under like official match conditions until that point. You have like an inkling of what you should be playing. So out of the gates, here we go. Gladiators with the Hanzo and the Ash. It's going to be Genji McCree for the Justice. The Ash and the Hanzo is really good at, like, shield breaking. And uh, obviously, they synergize great with the Hall. Uh, I do worry about how they deal with the Genji here. I think it's a lot of pressure on the space. Oh, oh gosh. Getting a kill on a Brick, by the way, is Hanzo. Or oh, just in general, it's, 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 it's a huge deal because normally she's just... So nuggety, so hard to uh, to sort of burst down with that shield in play. But now the Ugh. cleanup is here. We now have the Ash, murdering, just sort of pounding now. Yeah, switch going to be a stitch going to be switching to the Ash now. See if he can match this at all. Tuba though is adamant. Genji is where he wants to be. And, well, how much hit scan have we seen from Tuba in the past? Uh, when we've seen it from the Justice, it has really been Stitch. It's been Corey at times, yeah. right? It really hasn't been Tuba, so. Uh, maybe the ability to run double hit scan here kind of hurts them. Well, let's see. The Gladiators now uh, have a ton of room to use their Ash, but notice the Bird Ring still playing close to them because of the threat of, you know, Tuber on the Genji could just run in and get a 1v1. Pretty hard to hit the uh, Genji. So much information gained there. Like, the Justice trying to bait like a fake baby, and then just the Hypersphere is able to bounce off the wall. You're able to just get the hit markers. You oh, know exactly there's people there. Lucky to get back behind the shield was the Batiste for the Justice. Aim God stays alive for now. Shaz loses that immortality feel, but the Justice already had to use theirs. They go for an Ant Matrix, and so do the Gladiators. Windows are up. No one's home, uh, though. Uh, but look at this. Like, Tuba's not been able to dive in here at all. Try and make a play. It'll be a Gravitic oh. Flux. Catches a few players there, and Johnny's going to get one. Ah, uh, it's a massive Gravitic yeah. Flux, Matt. I mean, they knew that the Gladiators had to use their... Uh, immortality field because of the amplification matrix that came out from the justice so you know you're getting a pretty free flux like a one two kill scenario he saw birdering tried to reposition himself quickly with the coach gun but uh it didn't take no oh, it's uh now the gladiators be on the attack so to speak as the justice control the point and oh what they'll have rally here to work with so the rally could uh probably be popped as soon as the blade comes in uh maybe even use your uh Bob as well yeah. to counteract it. God, you don't even have Nano for the blade, man. So that rally just stifles, yeah. uh, blunts the blade even more than it would otherwise. 
Okay, so Dragon Strike and Gravity Flux are both there, but I mean, no one got rid of that Amplification Matrix. Uh, so the Justice Rebel just to wear the most of that damage. Here comes a late blade in the fight. Super needs to find a big difference here, and he gets Big Goose. He gets Kepster. Two is just not going to cut it, though. But after burdering, just yeah. get a gigantic Dynamite Stick. And they don't even use the Rally to combat it, they actually use the Bob. Nice shots there from Stitch. Dynamite trying to get some extra damage on the players down below as maybe you're able to make something out of this here for Washington. Get a quick pop build up. Oh, the stagger would be dangerous here though. He cannot die in this position. Oh my! That was classy. Stitch gets out alive. It did have to be an immortality field use, so that's down for the next 15 or so seconds. And the gladiators could actually open up a fight with like a very quick uh, ant matrix. There's, there should be no drone available right now for the justice. Yeah, but, All right, and it, you have a little bit of an advantage here for the gladiators to set a position like the justice have to come around that corner They will now with rally. They're walking into a flux here from space. Camps are on against you as well So the gladiators there's not this doesn't cost them anything to let the, the justice move up to the point here Space though a little bit vulnerable in mid-air birdering trying to stay alive stitch Didn't go well for him so that was deflected back at him. I'd say Janu now trying to back away over to the point. Caught behind the shield. Raw now just trying to hang on himself. And it's not looking good. The Gladiators now very different composition. Very different style as well. Uh, compared to what we saw on Li Zhang Tower map. But it works with about the same degree of efficacy. Yeah, so we'll see if anyone can get to the point here for the Justice. Contest. It looked like you had a Stitch take a big body shot there at range. Oh! Janu gets there. He gets one knocked off. But it looks like Bob is going to be able to win this here for the yeah, gladiators. She's coming yeah. for you, bro. Kepsa didn't even look. Cool guys look away from, uh, I guess, bisected uh, corpses. Fair enough. 100% at 57 there. Gladiators now set up to take the series potentially in the next round. Kepsa gets to stretch his legs, play a little bit more Genji, but I have to say space and birdering really coming alive for the gladiators there. And do you, do you change this if you're Washington at all? Like, uh, Probably not at this point. I mean, I guess you have to kind of commit to it, right? I mean, it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel the same as maybe like, uh, you know, seeing Tubi get Nano, you know, with the Ana being, you know, sort of in the mix and maybe that the Winston still looked all right for the Justice, you know, at times in the past. It just doesn't feel like the Genji is, is quite as frightening to you. But this is the composition, right? Like, in this current meta, where Genji is mostly being used right now, is he's not he's not expecting to get nano boost. It's not how the composition works. It's Brig Batiste. But again, it can be hard. You have to deal with so many things, right? The stun, uh, immortality field, obviously Ash making herself scarce, accretion. There's just a, it's hard. It can be really effective, but it's feast or famine against so many forms of CC and interruption. It's the gladiators will now match it with an Ash Genji of their own. Uh, so we'll see Kevser playing the Genji here yet again. He played it a little bit at the end of. Uh, Mecha base, but they've been doing as well as they've been trying to set up, uh, at least the Justice do. Like with the halts, they've been setting up like a uh, halt into like uh, dashes oh. from the Genji and the Dragon Blade. Uh, you won't see that now though, Bird Ring with a jumping headshot on the tuba. Yeah, he just waits for an off angle or a way to get dynamite, uh, you know, detonated from behind the shield. Kester, unfortunately, standing and blocking looking cool, doesn't protect you from burning. He will fall. Space now just wants to clean up this fight. The Wijanu, yeah, he's, he's in deep trouble, especially with Raw having been picked off already. And the Justice now need to slap themselves silly. They need to get it together. Point. Not captured yet. Nope. Yeah, the you're gonna go, can just I mean, saunter over. That, that's the best part about this for the Justice, right? Is that they're not going to give up a ton of uh, time here at the start yeah, I mean, just yet. It's kind of a... It feels like a reset because neither team really used all that many ultimates. I think Shaz used the uh, Amplification Matrix there. Maybe Aim God did the same. Okay, fair enough. We just uh, get a bit of a delay on capture percentage starting to crew. Space. A lot of reflected damage here from Tuba. Yeah, look, I mean, the hold is so big as well. You can't get away for that kind of thing. Okay, so both beacons are down. Both immortality fields have been removed. Kemp's doing the blade. Looks pretty good. What has Tuba got? That is Not a whole lot. A dent in the side of his head. That is a rough spot to beat when the other are Genji blades. Even with immortality field. Uh, the rally you know, there is just enough, right? The rally armor plus the Genji blade. Like, you're gonna be able to get rid of that immortality field, and everybody's so close together. Enough damage comes down. Uh, now, let's see what the Justice decide to do. They're gonna have all six ultimates here online. Dynamite for Stitch. Again, just probing. Tuba already down to Kepsi here, and a nice Gravitic Flux. There was an immortality field available. 
So the Justice don't suffer too many casualties, but it's definitely enough to turn tail. So they decide the Justice here that they can play the long game and just rally and bob. Maybe they would have invested more if Tuba didn't die right away. But they use those two ultimates. They'll still have four ultimates for this next fight, but they're going to give up like 75% of the point here. Plus, they have to kill Shaz. They have to. I mean, getting rid of the immortality feels pretty big. That's why it's so hard to kill Shaz in general, but getting rid of the Matisse is... Oh, man. Yeah, not happening. It's not happening, is it, Matt? Space finds this so early on in the fight. And Tuba, what's he looking for? I mean, come on. This is like the anime protagonist that's not strong enough to take down the big bad guy. Like, he just sort of runs into a brick wall time and time again. Tuba Blade. Oh, they got the point, Matt. I guess they had to at this point, but... I don't know. Not what they were looking for, anyway. Roar is so low here. They're going to have to use all this to heal him back up. They use the Supercharger as well. Uh, if you're the Gladiators, you, you probably back up here for a second. Play Regroup. the long game of your own. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you have an advantage now, right? So... Stitch back on the Tracer here. So back to Tracer Genji, right? just without the dive tanks. All right, good staggered fight. This is what the Justice want. That's how they get a refill uh, those ultimate charge banks here. But just... Oh. Yeah, more importantly, this is how they're going to be able to get uh, just percentage back up, right? They need these like long drawn out fights where they stagger the opponent to just get free percentage. Kev still with the blade. Aim God. Only play with an ultimate on the justice side. Amplification matrix. Come in handy. Kev's still looking for though. I feel like he's probably just going to try and make a play of his own volition here and see if there's going to be follow up. We'll hope there will be. Is there a stun? Ah, uh, no, he's not! Ah, uh, cannot stop Kevster! Finds one, and a second there as well, and if Brig can't stop it, then probably no one else will in that kind of scenario. And that's how Genji's get value right now, even with so many anti-Genji measures available. Kevster ends with what had to be four kills, and the Gladiators just move back to the point uh, now at 92. And even if the Justice get into touch, there will be an Ant Matrix here from Shaz coming up, a lot of extra damage coming in. Uh, it's not looking good for Washington. Here we go. On the point now, Tuba down already. Wrecking Ball gonna be thrown in there. Shaz sitting pretty and comfortable. Free enough to get some extra damage down. Uh, had to be Immortality Field used straight away, but Big Goose was around the corner, so we got taken down still by the Pulse Bomb. Ark looking very durable. Gravitic Flux here catches one. And yes, it was Aim God held off in midair. Still in overtime now, but Giant wants to go for the prize. They push past OG Shield and they get him. Stitch They're gonna do causing this. problems on the Tracer map. Oh, they don't. Blade here, interrupted by Tuba. Or for Tuba. Regardless, the Justice just hang on. Yes, the Gladiators end up losing both supports. They lose Shaz and Big Goose there as the Tuba will pick up a kill on a Goose. Uh, but the massive kill. So now some changes come in for the Gladiators. Now the Gladiators are in a weird spot where uh, they don't have any ultimates. Both of their healers switch after using them. Uh, they'll go back to the Batiste plus the Brig. Uh, Johnny is going to go over to Diva, so you're going to see like a traditional style dive composition here, almost outside of the supports. Come in for the Justice. All right, well, the eleventh hour, the Justice have saved this map and series for now. It's a lot of early da damage on Johnny, though. Aim God really needs to top him up. The Ana now is in play for the Justice. Tuba has more options now when it comes to the Dragon Blade, but they catch Raw out. The Justice try and go for a dive composition, man. It just doesn't work out so far, at least. Chaz is down. Okay, there it is. Both supports are missing for the Gladiators here, so that's been turned around. No healing available now for the rest of LA, but Space and Kempster are still there to deal damage. They're sat in the corner. They don't need healing if they're not taking damage. And their bunker is keeping them nice and durable here. A cold winter won't even bother them. Bird Ring finds Stitch and Roar is run into the ground, and the Gladiators take the series away. Signs of life, signs of resistance from Washington, but ultimately, it's too little and far too late. Yeah, and I I gotta say, I'm really impressed with how the Justice played after map number one. Map number one, they were they were bad. Uh, after that, <laughs> though, uh, they were able to turn it around. I think really uh, Tuba on the Genji today was phenomenal. Uh, I think he definitely deserves a, a, a lot of credit for the positive things we saw with the Justice. Uh, still not good enough to get a win, though. Uh, and I think the Gladiators adding Kevster, I think he played really strong, but I think there's still a lot to work on uh, in terms of teamwork and coordination for the Gladiators. There is no reason why this Justice roster cannot be a contender, cannot be, you know, like a top table uh, team th with the talent. There's no reason they can't be good, right? Like, uh, I, I wouldn't go as far to say, like, a uh, contender in, like, your top four, but there's no 
there's not really a clear reason why they can't be, uh, you know, in the hunt, right? Like, in the possibility of, like, where the Titans are, right? Where if you get a good schedule and you have the three games, you can, you know, take a two and one, right? I think they, they can definitely get there. Well, right now, the Gladiators are still eyeing off uh, a chance to vie for supremacy here in the Summer Showdown. And one player who pretty much, you know, with consistent performance, got them there today. This might surprise some of you at home, but, you know, we've been conferring with our stats people at the back, and uh, your player of the match presented by Xfinity today is going to be Space from the Los Angeles Gladiators. Yes, and uh, when you looked at the Gladiators team, it was like Kepsu come on a little bit late, played pretty good in the damage dealer role, but Space on the Sigma today was uh, a real big difference maker. When we looked at the head-to-head -head matchup between Janu and Space, Space was uh, really impactful every single map, whether you played a little bit of the D.Va, uh, but the Sigma being able to uh, neutralize a lot of players with the accretions throughout the series was a huge game changer for the Gladiators. I mean, yeah, that very slick accretion that was uh, sort of sent towards Tuba's Genji at the end of Hollywood after a big Gravitic Flux already came out from uh, our man's space there. So the guys, he's pretty comfortable, Matt, uh, on that role. And it's so funny because like part of our story pre-match was about how much better his diva was than his Sigma. And that's why we were excited to see it <laughs> right. because hero pools weren't in effect. But it didn't end, end up really being relevant uh, to the story of this match so far. We got a little bit of it. I think uh, the, the 2k diva bomb on Voskaya yes, was, was like a big part of why they managed to draw that map in the first place. Otherwise, they would have been screwed, I think. And then in terms of uh, Summer Showdown standings, what this does is the Gladiators, uh, they are in fifth right now. Uh, yeah, so with a plus two. Two and one, a plus two. So they are behind the Vancouver Titans. Uh, obviously, no more games for the Gladiators for the Summer Showdown, so they cannot pass the Titans. Uh, looking at this, uh, it's really to that Atlanta rain match uh, tomorrow between uh, them and Vancouver. Uh, whoever wins that could potentially sneak into that top four. Yeah, and as it stands, I guess that puts the Justice and Uprising, obviously, in, in uh, play in Yes, it three. does. Uh, it, well, I'm, they, they are both uh, with zero wins, 0-3. Nobody else, obviously, can get to 0-3. Uh, with the Justice sitting at minus eight maps and the Uprising sitting at minus seven. So uh, we will get that uh, that match, obviously, before we move on to our playoff week there. And, I mean, yeah, uh, the Titans pretty happy with that one. The Gladiators not able to leapfrog them. Uh, I think uh, even if even if the Gladiators ended uh, after that series with uh, a plus three, I still don't think it would have been enough to get them over the Titans because of a rule that states uh, that the last time they played... Uh, because the the Titans won that one, I think, like way back, something like that. that oh, they wouldn't, maybe, yeah. They, they wouldn't actually get to leapfrog them anyway. So I don't think, I don't know if it could have been any better than fifth place after they sort of dropped a map in this series, uh, uh, or, or or where they were standing anyway. So, <laughs> right. The, the point is, they're sitting at fifth right now. The Titans are there, so we're gonna get potentially some for, for some newer faces, especially in like the the lower part, I guess, of our brackets as we head into, like, quarterfinals. You know, we start to get our top eight teams and such like that. So it's a different feel already, especially with, like, you know, the Mayhem having a couple of struggles. Like, we pegged well, them as, like, top contender, I guess, uh, uh, last time around in the uh, May Melee. I but also, this time, they're middling. Yeah, and I also think you're going to see much different results, like, in the Summer Showdown, where the uh, Florida Mayhem in the May Melee, they were able to use that Tracer Ash composition, which a lot of people were not running. Now right. a lot of people have picked up on those different types of compositions, so everybody's starting to learn it at the same time, where it was like really just Florida doing that at the time to the effectiveness that we see now. Uh, I remember Yaki saying via Swing Chip in their interview, though, that yeah. that was like a meta that really suited them specifically. It wasn't like well, we have a head start. It was just like, these are heroes we want to play as Florida. But that kind of is turned into what everybody else is running now, right? Like everybody's sure. running some type of variation with like a flanker with an Orisa plus a Brig uh, with like an Ash Echo, that type of composition. And I think now with two weeks of, uh, well, really this week and then uh, next week in the first round with no hero pools, you're going to start to see teams, uh, you know, go back, tinker with this composition, try different things. I, I think it'll look way different than the May Melee. Well, the Gladiator's showing a bit of depth here and able to achieve results with two different main tanks at the helm. We're going to hear a little bit from them in just a moment. We're going to have Big Goose here uh, for a bit of an interview. What's up, everybody? It's Reinforce here. And yes, I'm here with Big Goose from the LA Gladiators. Fun little win. Five maps. How was that series for you, Big Goose? Um, it was kind of, we noticed like mistakes we did, I'm kind of glad we got to play it. Washington was a good match to play against, I think. Yeah, did Coming they surprise the, you, uh, I think? Uh, I wouldn't say surprise, I'd say their playstyle is slightly different from some other teams, or what uh, what we're used to go against. 
and we kind of failed to adapt on some parts of the series and after like Rialto we managed to like oh we just do this and it's gonna be like <laughs> we're gonna do a lot better basically okay Rialto was kind of you know we don't talk about it we don't talk about it I we don't have to we don't have to it's just you and me no one else is listening we don't have to talk about it it's all good yep so yeah, did this, did like the Genji like throw you off a little bit or did they, you know, push aggressively somehow? Like what, what adjustment did you have to make against Washington Justice? Oh, um, we didn't really have to make any hero swaps. Rather, it was like our own playstyle as well. Like we are kind of used to like playing more like not so straightforward playstyle, which kind of like we also like kind of like I say we kind of lost to ourselves in a way too on Rialto. We were trying to do like too much I think and we failed to see that in the moment and I think uh, after Rialto as we saw we like got our playstyle together and we started like just winning I guess yeah winning is pretty good yeah I kind of want to riff on that as well because you know you're playing this sort of chaotic style sometimes we've seen you implement LH Cloudy a bit more into the lineup and I mean both you and me, we know how he plays, and you know it's a bit, it's a bit uncharacteristic of Reinhardt, etc. Has that been hard for you to implement? Like, how have you implemented Cloudy to the lineup? Um, uh, I don't think it has really been that hard. I think Garon is like very, you know, they're very good at the game, and it's not hard to pick up. I think Cloudy has these uh, different win conditions uh, yeah. <laughs> that he finds. Let's just say that, and let's just say that he has been inspiring other players too, and we have seen that. So. Yeah, there's that. But you don't feel more pressure as a support to like keep him up because he goes for charges or like goes aggressive on flanks. Like, is it more pressure on you to like keep him alive when he's in game? No, as as Cloudy would say, he's just feeling it, and we just <laughs> go with the feeling. <laughs> oh yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, we're moving into the summer showdown next week, and I mean, dare I say, you know, you have been a bit inconsistent in the in the past. Like, what are you working on before the summer showdown to establish some of that consistency within the team? Uh, I think for sure, when we look at our own losses as a team, we have been like, we always think that, um, like, not taking anything from the other teams, we always feel that uh, we have been like, kind of failing ourselves as a team. And this is like what we have been like, working really hard on, especially like after like losing the outlaws, we have been like, really working hard on like, working like together and like, trying to figure out what's like, because uh, our screens don't really translate uh, well into the stage. Uh, like, we are just been having a hard time on matches, and right now we're just focusing on how we can bring that environment to matches. Yeah. Do you think it's mostly like a conference thing, and like people going for plays they do in scrims, or do you think it's like shot calling? Do you have an, any idea of what that is, perhaps? Um, I can't really say for certain. It, I think it's a bunch of small things that end up kind of snowballing and like hurting us in the long run and sometimes you know Atlanta you know make a record against us and stuff like that you know some of the stuff like that happens so yeah I think I think it's a bunch of small things uh, that just snowball together and then we're like oh guys we need to like get a grip yeah well good good news Big Goose you have a week to prepare and you got a win today so Time to celebrate and be happy about today. So, uh, you have time to prepare for next week for the Summer Showdown. But of course, uh, thank you so much for joining me here, Big Goose, and talking some Overwatch with me. Uh, next up, we have the Watchpoint Post Show, so stay tuned for that. It's me, Kosta, and Zoe. That's all our matches wrapped up for today. Thank you so much, Mitch and Matt, for the casting. And I'll see you on the other side of this break with the Watchpoint Post Show.